automating browsers is one of the two key elements as a Power Automate desktop developer. I have a web page here which you can find by navigating to the internet.herokuapp.com forward slash login. Here I need to do a login with Power Automate Desktop. That's it. Fill a username, fill a password, and a login. And hint, hint, the username is actually up here since this is only a test page. The password is here. Copy that one in here. Click login. And now our task is to take a screenshot of this area, wait three seconds, click log out. I hope you understood it because we will create it together now. I just refresh it to get rid of this green bar. To open up a browser and to navigate to a URL, we of course need the URL. So I go up here and copy in the URL. Back to Power Automate Desktop. I'll find a launch new. And here you can see I can pick Internet Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, or Edge. As long as you don't choose Internet Explorer, as that one is outdated and insecure, I'm fine with whatever browser you choose. And each one of them will be very easy to automate. So I'll launch a new instance. The initial URL, press Control V, that is my URL from before. Here you can see we produce one variable that is a browser variable. So this is a browser instance that we created. And when we want to automate in this window, we just refer to this variable. I click save. Try to click run and see that you can actually open up the browser and navigate to the page. This one works for us. Now we need to fill in the username. And let's just copy the username from up here. We will store the username in a variable. So I'll find a set variable and drag it in above the launch new Chrome. In variable here, I will call this username. And the value we'll give it is control V. That will be Tom Smith. Now I can refer to the username variable. And whenever uh, I do that, I'll get the value Tom Smith back. I click save. Now let's try to use it. So I'll find a populate text field on web page under web form filling, drag it in after launch new Chrome. Here you can see that we are referring to the browser instance that we just created, we talked about. The UI element, that is anywhere on a web page we have UI elements. And if I click this drop down, I can click add UI element. And here you can see we can add different UI elements from the web page. And actually, uh, this is what the web developers made. And I will choose the input text here. Now press control on your keyboard, left click with your mouse, and we have created our first UI element, which is the input username field. In here in text, we could write Tom Smith like this, that one will fill in Tom Smith, but we created a variable for that. A variable needs to have percentage sign in the start and in the end. We don't have to write it. Just click this little X here. And here you can see our username variable. Either click it and click select or simply just double click, which I prefer. Then we can click save. So now we have our first flow. Let's test that it actually works. So we open up a browser, fill in a username. It's that easy to automate web. And let me go back to the, uh, to the Power Automate desktop. If I go over here to the right, click UI elements. You can see that we have created a UI element here called input text username. That is the input field. First, I like to rename my variables. So I can either click right click and click rename or press F2. I'll call this username input field just to have a little bit more describing a name. You can see that it automatically gets updated the name over here. Down here is a picture. And if I double click it, here you can see our selector. The selector is built up from these elements. We will not go through them in this session. But it's worth to mention that we uh, this selector is a CSS selector. It says, look in the input element, find the attribute ID with the value username. Let me show you where this is from because this is valuable. This is a little bit more advanced, but I'm sure you will like it. In the browser, you can press F12. That will open up the developer tools. I want to inspect the code for the username field. So if I click this little arrow when I'm in the elements, click it here, 
And there you go. The input, that was the input element. If you move a little bit in into that element, you can see the attribute ID equals username. So this is actually just the code that we used. We could attach it in ourselves if we wanted to do it, but Power Automate Desktop do it automatically. So uh, that's how easy it is. Let me close it again, click cancel here. Now you know where these selectors originates from. We also need to fill in the password. So let's go copy that. Let's find a set variable like this and drag it in here. This one I will call password. Control V the value in super secret password. I can click save. Similarly, we will populate text field on web page. So I'll find a populate text field on web page. Take the one on the web form filling and not the one on the form filling. So I'll drag it in here. The UI element, that is the password field. I click add UI element and find the password field just as we did before. Now click control on your keyboard and left click with your mouse. We have created another UI element. And again, the same syntax, click this little X here in the text, double click the password. Now we can fill the password in. I click save. Go over to the UI elements again. In case you don't see them, it looks like this. You can just click them. Go down here and now I'll try to click F2. That will also rename it. This one is called password input field like this. Now, again, let's try to run the robot to see everything works. We usually do that. We do it step by step. So we can see that we have typed in the password and it's very likely that it's the password that we set up here. Now we need to click a button. So up in actions again, then you'll find a click link on web page. And that one is here. Drag it in after the two populate because now we have filled in username, password. We need to click. Again, we are in the browser the instance and we want to add another UI element. So click the drop down, add UI element, go find, find the button here. You can see we have both a text and a button. Both will probably work. I prefer the button, but I think both will work. So just take that one, press control, left click with your mouse. We have created another UI element. Again, I click save. And I'll always go over to the UI elements, make it a best practice to always rename these UI elements that will make it easier to maintain both for you and your colleagues. So in the button radius, I right click, rename and here I will say login button, I click enter. Now we can try to run the robot again to see that we can now uh, fill in the username password and click the login. That's it. We are now logged in. This one up here is just my password manager. So don't worry. Now we need to take a screenshot, wait three seconds and click log out. So uh, we will do the take screenshot first. So let's find a take screenshot of web page. We can also do of UI elements, but for now we will do the entire web page. Drag it in here. So here I can say, do I want to take the entire web page or a specific element? I'll just take the entire page. Save it to a clipboard or a file. Here I need to uh, have a file. I want to uh, save it to my desktop. A good little pro trick. Let me, let me click save. That will give me an error. So I go to my desktop. I right click. Then I say new and a new text document. This will easily get me the path of my desktop instead of I have to write it and um, uh, make errors. So I shift right click copy as path, go back to power to make desktop. Now I open up the take screenshot of web page again. I could also click this little file selector, but I prefer the other way. So here the image file now say control V. I know this is a text document, we'll fix it. So I'll do this, delete the two quotation marks. And then let's talk about what file format we want to use. We want, for example, a PNG that is the most often used. So I'll take that one. Then we'll also need to have a PNG ending up here. So instead of TXT, we'll have a PNG. Now let's give it another name. So I'll say maybe new screenshot. Nothing fancy, but this will work. So now we take a screenshot of the web page, place it on the desktop. We will wait three seconds and then we'll click the lock out button, which you'll find here. 
So find a weight here. Drag this weight in. Here you just need to specify how many seconds you want to wait for. I'll wait for three. The reason I do this, this is just a process description, but it's actually so we can see that we are uh, clicking log out. So that's the only one for this. And you will learn to make these delays. We'll often also make delays in web development in Power Automate Desktop when we want to load things probably. So now we want another click link on web page here. Drag it in, let me just drag it in in the end. So we need to create another UI element for that. So add UI element, take uh, the logout here, press control, pick it and click save. Again, you know the drill, go over to UI elements and here you can see we are on a different page. So these ones got created up here from the login page. This is the secure area. So we created it down here, right click, rename and then you say lock out button like this click enter so now we have created our entire flow shouldn't we try test it so here i'll click run lock in do a screenshot wait three seconds and then do the lock out that worked uh, we just need to check for the screenshot there it is. It's that easy to automate browsers. The next lesson you'll find up here. Go click it. See you.